Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Kevin from Balls to You and this is going to be a video all on dinkers. Now, give you a bit of history on the word dinker. Dinker was actually coined by a breeder, a well-known breeder who's still around today called Ralph Davis. Um, he sort of dipped into the shadows a little bit at the minute, but uh, he's, he's about. Um, Ralph was great when I first started out. Uh, he would answer my emails and speak to me and he's got tons of videos on YouTube which are quite old but they're still very sort of informative and great to look at and uh, Ralph actually inspired me to do what I do and what have you so um, the word dinker basically means to take a gene that or a snake that looks a little bit different and work with it um, find out if there's anything else going on with that snake because it looks different to normal and as you would do to tinker with a car Ralph coined the name Dinker so you would dinker with a project so this is one of my Dinker projects this is Nessie uh, she's been breeding for me now this was her second season so she's bred twice for me um, this girl when I looked at her and I saw she was really dark uh, which is what I loved uh, she's got a real nice dark um, appearance to her um, but what's really shocked me is what's came out of her now two years in a row the first season in, the first season she had a dual side clutch which for those who uh, know my videos could look back and have a look um, but she gave me uh, one banana one spider and um, there were, I think there were three or two of the normals. Now the two normals look really different, uh, which I kept back. Uh, I let the one go and decided to keep the one that was really weird in pattern, uh, which I'll get out and show you now. But what also, what the other thing that, that she throws, not only does she, sh she throw a strange pattern, she also throws a bright gene. Um, when I say bright, her offspring tend to be quite gold in colour. So I'll show you her son who she's been breeding back with. And you'll see what I mean. Okay, now there's the son. Now as you can see by the abstract patterns and the real wacky patterns matching hers, you know, they're virtually, you know, she, she's got some strange patterns herself. Um, but she throws out these gold coloured babies which is really bizarre um, which I can't figure out what's exactly going on but uh, she's also thrown a real weird one this season uh, which I dubbed as the Gobi gene uh, or the Gobi uh, and I'll get him out in a minute and I'll show you so this guy is her son and whatever's going on with him I believe is what's going on with the mom the difference is though as you can see with the mom she's really dark but she throws these really high gold looking babies out really bizarre really weird pattern strange so I'm going to try and control these as best as I can so really strange really bizarre um, what she throws um, so obviously I kept one of the sons back just to breed back and that's exactly what you do when you dinker you basically take their offspring uh, or the, the strange looking offspring and then you breed them back to the mom or to the dad depending to obviously see what's going on so this is Nessie so she's got a real strange looking head pattern as well which is something um, you'll see in the Gobi um, her son I don't, this son here his head doesn't look too obscure but when I show you the Gobi the Gobi does look like mom so he's breeding for me this season he's only going back to his mom and the mom is only having her son um, to see exactly what's going on last season I did throw the son in I didn't witness the lock but what came out was really bizarre uh, now I only bred to her last year as well uh, I bred a male pied because I wanted to have no um, other genes involved so obviously even though there'd be pied involved uh, I didn't want no other sort of pattern or colour mutation so 
I bred uh, a pied back to her, or a bred a pied to her to see exactly what what we got going on. As you can see, the gold contrast compared to his mom it was really high gold. So I'll show you the goby. Bear with me. Okay, rise. This is what I've dubbed as the goby. Again, all that I bred to her last season was a pied male who hasn't thrown anything like this and her son. Now I didn't witness a lock. All that's going back to her this season is her son, no one else. Um, but what I wanted to show you, she chilled out a little bit. Class, chill, chill. Wait. He's her head and his head are very similar. I'm trying to do this as best I can, guys. Very similar. It's hard to see on the camera, but they are very similar in, in the way they look in their head head markings. So this is Nessie. Um, her gene I've just dubbed as the Nessie gene. Um, to see exactly what's going on. But again, she throws these high gold coloured looking babies. Again. This was one of hers, and it does look very Mojave-ish, but it's not a Mojave because a Mojave didn't go anywhere near her. Uh, it does, could, I suppose, if you wanted to compare it, past RV, yeah, could look like past RV, but again, no pastel, no Mojave in this girl, nor in a son, nor in what went, went anywhere near her. Again, her weird alien heads on the patterns and stuff, really funky patterns on the tail. She's gonna go around the camera. So again, really bizarre, really strange looking. I'll pull the goby a bit more close and we can have a look at him. So, okay, we're back. She was a bit skittish, so she's never normally that bad, but it is feeding time and breeding time, so. But what I wanted to show you, her son, is he's got gray, silver eyes. Now, I don't know what's going on with this guy or what's happened, I have no idea. She, it's not retained sperm because she wasn't bred to, um, she was bred to a spider and a banana the season before. This isn't a banana nor a spider, as you can see. Uh, this season just gone, she was bred to a Mojave and to her son. I didn't witness a lock with the son. They could have locked, but I didn't see anything. And that certainly hasn't come out of the Mojave, uh, sorry, that certainly hasn't come out of the uh, pied because um, the pod's just a normal pod. It does look very Mojave-ish. Uh, I double check my records. I didn't put a Mojave in with her whatsoever. But again, if we look at a Mojave, a Mojave looks nothing like this guy. So I'm really baffled into what has gone on or how it how it's come about. Again, really strange tail pattern. Really weird. And like I said, he has got silver eyes, which is a bit bizarre. Again, just the patterns just really obscure. So that's what we class as a dinker. And obviously, once he's a little bit older, he'll be going back to mom as well. If I prove nothing out from the other from the other son from last year, uh, but this is what we class as a dinker project. Okay, there's a male or female involved, maybe some hatchlings, and they're throwing weird babies. So that's the goby, what I've dubbed as the goby. And again, uh, we'll see exactly what comes out of him. Okay, so let's move on to the next gene. Okay, this is Summer. I've, I had her at the same time as Nessie. She is completely different looking to Nessie uh, in the way of colors and completely different to a normal. Um, if I grab, Okay, you can see that Summer is a bit more yellow than Nessie. Obviously Nessie being a little bit darker, but Summer she's really yellow. Okay, I mean yellow. When she glows, she looks like a firefly. It's crazy. So there's a quick comparison in colour. 
she is obviously similar sort of colours to a normal and she's a lot lot brighter to begin with I thought she was some sort of, some sort of ghost but uh, I'm not sure quite what's going on with her but we'll have a closer look at her okay so what was special about, ne uh, about Summer again the colour she was very very light almost yellow in appearance um, she has almost like yellow flames coming up the side of her here a bit difficult to see again adults are very difficult to look at very difficult to tell apart uh, it's normally when the hatchlings that you're looking in a, at them and you see there's something different going on then you're gonna work with it but you gotta bear in mind I mean she is an adult she's bred for me once and uh, so she's had one breeding season she was the first breeding season but again underneath here coming up is very yellow again is it recessive is it incomplete or dominant I don't know but all I can tell you is the babies that she's thrown are different looking again so come on sweet top let's have a close look at you again she has some real nice yellows coming up the side there as you can see Okay, darling. Really nice sort of head. Again, the yellows on the neck. Just really different looking animal altogether. Um, again, yellows down the side. So really bright animal. Um, obviously, I had her from a, a yearling, so she was very a lot more brighter then. Um, you can see her on some of my videos and on some of the uh, Instagram pictures how bright she looks. So that is summer. I'll show you some of her offspring um, and we'll look into something exactly what's going on with her so just bear with me okay this is one of the daughters I kept back again it's a bit difficult to see but trust me she, this daughter that I've kept back is a lot more brighter than a few of her offsprings were and uh, just brighter than normal uh, it's a bit difficult to see but again She's got a similar sort of looking head and eye, eye stripe, the way it comes down. Come here, sweetheart. The way it comes down to a, a chin. Similar sort of head, uh, the way it's blushed out. And again, she's starting to get this sort of yellowy sort of colour coming up uh, on her alien heads. So, she's a female that I'm holding back. It could be something recessive that, that Nessie, uh, sorry, that Summer's carrying, that's because certainly some of her offspring were completely different and I, you've got to understand I've kept back the most obscure looking animals uh, to put back into the project again different alien heads the alien heads on her look really different so again just messing about with a bit of a dink project that could be proven out to be either hiding something recessive or it could be its own gene in its own right so that is the daughter I'll show you the sun I kept back. Where is he? Now, summer was bred to a Cosmo Harvey. Cosmo Harveys have been known to throw out weird and wonderful things and I've hatched quite a few Cosmo Harveys this season but I haven't hatched any Cosmo Harvey that looks like this dude um, what do I think is going on I have no idea because potentially if it was a recessive then you wouldn't be seeing anything although some recessive genes do show themselves up like uh, ultra males um, het ultra males should I say or het pies or het clowns they can look a little bit different so this could be the same like, let's say if mom's a het for something okay chill if mom's a het for something now it could be that this dude here is carrying that same het form because he is really bright um, compared to all the Cosmo Harveys that I've hatched this season I've had some weird Cosmo Harveys but whatever's going on with mom, I believe he's going on with this dude here and obviously the girl that I showed you. So he's not going to be big enough this season to breed back to her. So 
I'm trying to figure out what to put to her this season, but I'll figure something out. But again, what we're looking for is uh, some sort of um, continuation of this sort of, you know, coloration, if you like. Uh, again, really weird looking Cosmo Harvey. Now, it could well be that the mom is just normal and this is just a real nice Cosmo Harvey, but the mom's just one of them normal genes that can't be replicated. But again, we'll find out. So, this is another Dinka gene that I'm hopefully going to try and prove something out, see what's going on. Again, some of the others, hatchlings in the clutch, didn't look anything like him, just looked normal. So, who knows? Normally, the idea is you'd keep everything back, but I'm not fortunate enough to have all them spaces. So, I've just had to make a, a fine selection and hold back what I think could be carrying the gene. So, that is her son, who's a Cosma Harvey, plus whatever she is. I've just dubbed it the Sable gene. Uh, sorry, Sabre, not Sable. Uh, Sabre gene for now just so I know but I will change that name probably so yeah so there's a little bit something interesting to look forward to in the future once he gets a little bit bigger obviously I'll find something to breed with her probably probably the pied again uh, to breed because obviously I'll know everything will be 100% het pied and I'll be able to pick out hopefully whatever mom's carrying I may use something else I don't know yet we'll see but I need something pretty plain, something that I can see what's going on, so I can, you know, really see what's going on with mom. So that's another Dinka project that we're working with that we have proven to be something going on. So uh, we'll see exactly what's going to happen in the future with that one. So on to the next one. Okay, this is one that I'm really excited about. Um, as you can see, this dude, his pattern is completely blown apart. Again, this is a male. Um, this guy was up for sale uh, due to he was basically kept as a pet. I have no idea where he came from. I have no idea um, where the person that got it from got it from. <laughs> Simply because it was a pet that was left to someone else to look after, and they just couldn't look after him in, after him anymore. So obviously, I took him off his hands skin here you go dude so what are we looking at here well god they're all s sort of crazy tonight okay what we're looking at is obscure pattern straight away you can see all the alien heads are busted up straight away every alien head pretty much has something going on okay completely blown out of the water he has this chocolate brown head going on hopefully you can see that compared to his other parts of his body um, and if I just take this just move it around I want to show you guys now all the normals that I've seen you don't get normals like this uh, the trick is when I f first saw him I thought oh he's a trick uh, but he's not a trick he the trick is nowhere near this busted up, nowhere near this crazy in pattern. He's not a GHI, obviously, because uh, the pattern's nothing like it. Um, he's not a granite. Uh, the pattern is just too crazy. I mean, the tail in there. Um, what's going on with him? I have no idea. I feel 100% that he will prove out. Um, I've dubbed this guy the hazard gene, just because of all the busted up pattern. He's obviously not a leopard, he's not nothing I can physically find on the world of ball pythons. So this dude is really going to be interesting to see what's going to happen. I might breed him this season, I just don't know. Um, I really don't know. I thought about breeding him to summer, the last girl you saw, but then I thought, well, I'm going to have two Dinka genes that I'm trying to separate. So I didn't really want to go there. So who knows, I mean this guy... This guy is about a 2014 baby. He was very uh, underweight when I picked him up and dehydrated. But as you can see, going back on track, 
and he absolutely loves his food because he wouldn't uh, strike feed for the person before uh, he was kept in a viv which was nothing wrong with that uh, he just wasn't happy he didn't want to strike feed he didn't feel confident so basically he just sort of um, just drop fed which is where you obviously leave the rodent in the in the in the in the enclosure for the uh, the snake to take as and when he wants to take so I'll do a quick belly shot of him and then I'll wrap it up so really weird unusual towards here which you can't see much of he's moving but he does have some weird genetics going on uh, he's not an acid gene uh, he's he's just too busted up to be anything that I can physically see on world of ball pythons just absolutely crazy so this guy for me what I'm looking for when I look at Dinka projects or when I look at new mutations or something that could prove out I look at a number of things including the pattern, the belly, their eyes, head stamps, all that sort of stuff, key features into what you know possibly could be proven out to be another mutation. Um, could this have a super form? I have no idea. This guy is just completely crazy. So his patterns and just everything about him is just busted up. So here's another one for the Dink projects to try and prove out and fingers crossed we do and we'll just uh, take it from there and we'll see exactly what we can get from him so just a little short video guys hope you enjoyed it nothing too major just wanted to touch on some stuff because I've had people ask me you know what's a dinker and stuff like that because believe it or not a lot of people who've come into the hobby uh, don't quite know what the dinker word means or where it comes from but basically a dinker means something that you're just messing with you're trying to prove out you're just having a tinker you're having a play you're seeing if that animal will prove out to be a proven mutation okay everyone so hope you're enjoying the video thanks for all my subscribers thanks for all the support guys um just let you guys know i did do an interview with sean bradley at exotics by nature who does the uh, bullshit podcast on itunes or you can find it on any podcast uh, device on your Android which hopefully will be released pretty soon so it was good to have a chat with Sean and give uh, the UK a shout out let's say ok everyone so hope you're enjoying the videos obviously breeding season's pretty much coming to an end I think I've got two more clutches left I well, know I've got two more to go so I'll keep you guys updated with that we've obviously got the update coming from the double hex clutch which is double het albino and exantic so i'll have an update on them as soon as i've shed out but uh that's it from me guys hope you're all okay and i'll speak to you guys soon take care